Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about the way ASPEs communicate. And I'm only going to scratch the surface here today, but I wanted to at least open up the conversation. So I wanted to talk to you about our literal thinking and I guess what you can call our kind of direct, honest, sort of blunt way of communicating. Um, first of all, when it comes to literal thinking, um, what I think of as like a perfect example of that is in the movie Mary and Max, if you saw that, which if you haven't, I definitely recommend it. It's be a beautiful movie. Max has Asperger's. And he goes into the doctor's office and it says, please take a seat. And then the next scene they cut to, he's on the train and he has a chair with him because he was, he read, oh, please take a seat. So he took one. That's an example of literal thinking. Now, I didn't realize that I really have this as much as I do. I, I guess I didn't think it applied, partly because I understand if it says, please take a seat, that means sit down. And like at the beginning of my video, I realized I just said, scratch the surface. Like I'm not literally scratching the surface. I'm just kind of looking at the top layer of something or the, the surface level of it. So anyway, um, I don't do that, but I think it's because, I mean, my God, I'm in my 40s and I've had to figure this out because when you misunderstand things, you get embarrassed and you don't want to keep doing that. So I think it was just with a lot of work and effort. I had a situation that I remembered from when I was little where I was really embarrassed because I misunderstood something. I was probably about 11 years old in art class and this boy said about his project, he said, oh, it stinks. And I picked it up and I smelled it. And I said, no, it doesn't. And then they laughed at me and I was so embarrassed. And I have this feeling I, that I made the decision like, oh my God, like I never want to do that again. And I really probably studied and learned a lot. Um, so that's why I don't think I have those really obvious misunderstandings with phrases. But I realized after reading about Asperger's and, and you know, communicating with other people, how much I do take things very literally and very much at face value, which is not so much the way our society works, unfortunately, and it's really hard. If somebody says something to me, I really take that to heart. Their words carry a lot of weight. And remember, people with Asperger's, we do not have a strong part of our brain where we can understand the social cues. So neurotypicals, people without autism, they're getting the information from two ways, both the words and the subtext. We're only getting the words, which is why I put so much weight on it, frankly. It is so hard for me when people are being vague or basically just not being direct. What happens is I can usually tell that they're not being direct and I assume that they're not being direct because they have something bad that they don't want to say. They're afraid to say it. They're afraid to be direct with you. So for me, it causes me severe distress when people either aren't being direct in what they say or if they're withholding. That's another thing too, withholding what they think or feel. And then, you know, I'm left kind of wondering or feeling anxious. One of the places where indirect communication comes in the most and is so problematic, I think, is in the dating world. It's all, uh, what, is, what words do I want to say? Games? <laughs> like, it's nonverbal communication, it's indirectness, or they say certain things but mean something else, or they don't want to be honest, and blah, blah, blah. I find it torturous. <laughs> it's really, really painful, and I think I myself tried to figure out those 
kind of nonverbal methods and um, sort of the game, but I just was never very good at it. Like, I, I, I don't know. But it's interesting. There was this one guy I had dated when I was much younger, and he was a really nice guy, but he lived like five hours away. And so, of course, we couldn't see each other very much. But he called me maybe after a few months that we knew each other, and he told me that, you know, it just wasn't working because he lives too far away, it's too hard, he was just starting out in a career, and it was taking all of his energy, you know, and he was really nice, he's like, I like you, it's just, unfortunately, it's just not workable, and I was like, oh my god, I was so happy, I felt like I liked this guy more because he was just direct with me, this is unheard of, I mean, most people, they don't want to see you, they just either make excuses or lie or stop calling you. And, and the beautiful thing was with him, I was able to just, I mean, feel so positive towards him. And then he came into town, you know, a few times after that and we got together. I mean, it was just really nice, no hard feelings. I really, really need that directness. It's, it's not, it's not just a want to have, it's just the way my brain is wired. The other thing I want to talk about is uh, from the other perspective of how we Aspies communicate. We're known for being very kind of honest, direct, maybe blunt. Some might experience it as rude. I don't know. There's assorted opinions. That's not actually what's going on. But um, we do, I think, tend to be a lot more direct in our communication. There are a couple incidents from my childhood that really show so clearly about this like direct communication. And these are kind of hard for me to share with you because it's painful and it was hurtful. But that's part of the condition. It wasn't my fault. But anyway, just wanted to say that. I ran into this girl at a high school reunion who's somebody I knew from grade school and she told me that this one time when we were kids she came over to my house and we were on the swings and she said well I'm gonna get going and I said good now I was simply mortified that I said this to her I felt absolutely awful I didn't remember doing this and I said, oh my god, I am so sorry. I said, I don't remember doing that. I don't know why I would have said that. I, I, just, I couldn't just apologize enough to this woman. You know, clearly, like, she remembered this all these years, so, like, probably wasn't, like, a good memory for her. I don't think she held it against me, but still, I felt so bad. And, you know, that's the thing. It's like, I don't think there's, there's never a bad intention. I was probably just maybe not having that much fun with her and probably just wanted to go do my Barbies or something. And then this other situation that I felt just oh really bad about. There was this boy who I think liked me and he was, I don't know, we were probably 12 years old and one day he said, um, do you like me? And I think he meant like a boyfriend or something like do I like him like a crush or whatever. And I said, no. I just said, no. And then I realized, oh, that's bad. I, I can't just say that. That's terrible. And then I said, oh, but I don't hate you. Like, I, how this person remained friendly with me, I don't know. Like, I just feel terrible that I said that. But it's that sort of directness that it's just the way that we're wired and it's really hard because people don't like to hear that. You know, it's hurtful. They feel hurt. And a lot of times, too, that's misunderstood. You don't have any bad intentions behind it, but it's just the tone of your voice and the direct directness of your statement that can really put people off. So I've worked really, really hard to try and not do that, but it's exhausting. Like, it's a hard way to live. It's like forcing yourself to do something that's against your nature and I'm trying to work through the situation of I can't keep suppressing who I am because it's 
just taking a massive toll on me. But at the same time, I want to communicate in a way that is not hurtful to people. So I honestly don't have this figured out at all. I mean, I've only had my diagnosis for like less than a month, and I've known that I've had Asperger's for not even like six months. So this is also new, and I'm trying to understand how do I how do I do this? I mean, how do I stop forcing myself to be against my own nature? But at the same time, I have to have certain skills to survive and have relationships in this world. So it's tough. But it's interesting, when I got my testing done for the Asperger's, I really love the doctor. She was really nice. She works at a place where... Leanne Holiday Willie consults, and if you don't know Leanne, she's an author who's got a couple great books on Asperger's, and she's also obviously a consultant in this arena. And so the doctor knows Leanne. It's kind of funny because the doctor said, I kept thinking during our conversations that, God, she's so much like Leanne, and she and Leanne would get along so well which is kind of interesting. And I think she said for her it was kind of like a real sign that, yeah, I probably really do have Asperger's if she's comparing me to Leanne. But she's like, yeah, you know, with you and Leanne, you're just straight shooters. You know, you say what you mean, you mean what you say. And I was like, really? Like, what's so frustrating is, like, I don't see myself that way at all. Like, I just don't. But I guess that's how I am. So... Oh boy. Anyway, um, I guess if you made it through this video, I will say thank you for watching. And if you are a regular viewer of my other videos, I also want to say thank you. And I want to let you guys know that I do need your help. The way the searches work is that my videos will only even show up in searches if I'm getting um, more engagement from my viewers. So if I'm getting likes, if I'm getting people who subscribe, if I'm getting comments or shares, like that is all helpful to get my videos even to show up so that people can see them. So I just want to ask you guys if you have liked the videos, if you think there's somebody who might like them, please, you know, please like them, please share them. I just want to get the message out and help people in whatever way I can. And the only way I can do that is if actually, if people can actually find my videos. So I really, really appreciate it. And oh, by the way, I don't know if you guys saw my um, Asperger's and special interests video, but uh, I am actually wearing something that's part of my special interest, this necklace. If you can see it, it looks sort of like a leaf, doesn't it? You can almost see better against my shirt. Um, it's actually a map. It's a map of Barcelona. Isn't that cool? It's like cut with a laser. And I thought, oh my god, like how cool because Spain's a special interest and maps are a special interest. I actually, I also have a, I just realized I have a Barcelona pillow. So I didn't show you guys all of my visual aids in that video, just a few. And I thought, how cool is that? So anyway, just a little tidbit. Um, anyway, that's it. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching and for your support.